most times in a rod builder's life, they would normally use some form of V block. This is a very basic one from my early days of rod building. And the V is the top here, a V block. It can be cut out in a cardboard box, pieces of wood, plastic, plywood, or anything. But it's just a V block on which to rest the rod when one is working. <coughs> Next, we apply the epoxy finish. An epoxy, doesn't matter which brand you're using, is self leveling. That means when you put it on something round, it will drop to the bottom and then drip off very slowly and methodically. And only a very small amount will retain on the thread. So you need to rotate your rod. In the early days, Velcro or something similar was used to hold the rod in place. And every half an hour you walked in the room and you just turned it by hand to keep the epoxy on the thread, on the rod, and to achieve your finish. The next item on the scene comes from the Stonefly brand, one of Hopkins and Holloway's uh, products. And this is a fly tying uh, machine which helps dry flies with epoxy heads but also has the added bonus of a rod rest. You have a small battery operated motor here which will rotate your rod. There's an adjustable chuck here, very basic, will hold a rod in place, a rod rest. And the fly tying product, which I'll show in a moment, sits underneath the rod stand so everything is level. It's all in, press the button and it rotates. It's a lovely slow speed, it holds the epoxy, the epoxy in place while it's drying, it's battery operated, it's very mobile, it can go anywhere. I've used one similar ex exhibitions uh, displaying rod guides on a similar rod to this for many years. Um, it won't do a big heavy beat rod, it will do most fly rods, it will do a carp rod, and if you're only building the odd rod it might be an option for you to consider. So there we have it, the Stonefly Rotary Fly Dryer and Rod Turner. Okay, now we've changed the head on the Stonefly Dryer for the fly fishermen who tie their own flies uh, and the type of flies that are called jig heads or in fact some of the salt water, heavier salt water flies where epoxy goes onto the head of the feather by the eye um, to form some form a little bit of weight or to create the artificial uh, imagery that's being created. Put the foam disc on, press the button and away you go. You put your dab of epoxy on the fly, set the hook into the foam and you can leave that until it dries. Very easy, very effective, as I say battery operated. The bonus is it's very mobile. For the rod builder who's uh, making more than the odd rod, rod every two or three months, then something that's mains powered is to be looked at. This uh, rod dryer is by Pacific Bay and is their single dryer. They also have an arrangement where it can be wall hung, where you have four of these motors and chucks in a line that you screw to the wall and four of these stands which you put onto another piece of wood which you set up so far down the wall. Turn it on and it just simply rotates. This I find is very good for small blanks because when the chuck is right down like this it will grip. As I, say, I have one myself and on some of the larger blanks the, this becomes unstable and although my hand there just chuck, touched the back of the chuck I have known it to work undone and the rod fall out. These jaws are just a little loose and the hooks on the top here, just here, are for elastic bands. So you can actually elastic band your blank into place. As I say, it's a very good model uh, and will do a lot of good work for you. This is the latest offering from Fuji Components, their own design of rod dryer. I first saw this several months ago 
and was immediately taken by the mechanism on which you clamped the rod. Stainless steel sprung wire with a plastic sleeve to protect your rod. Just open the jaws, the rod comes out, open the jaws and the rod goes in. And these jaws will spread to take a very large rod. Surf rods were going to be very easy in it. Once everything is lined up, switch on. Again, a lovely steady speed and a dryer that can run for a long time. If you're leaving this overnight, this is a great machine to use. It won't, shouldn't overheat and everything will be dry and set for you in the morning. If you're working in a warm environment, it may not need to run it all, da all night. So don't forget to experiment with a timer switch on the plug. It cuts down the running time, cuts down the use of electricity and everything else. It, uh, it is a lovely piece of kit. I believe that this Fuji has one added bonus. Normally, when we're working with very light rods, we would only put the butt end of the section into the dryer and let it rotate because that's what we normally do. But in my years of experience of rod building and repairing rods, just now and again I've needed to do something different. And until this came along, it's not been possible. Let's stop her, open the jaws, Turn it round, and this is a very light match rod, and I'm going to have to hold the support which is to my left. But what it will do, once I get the jaws to open, it will clamp the tip of this match rod, which could be equally a light fly rod. And if I hold this, switch it on first. Hold this out here so the tip is not stressed. As you will see, the jaws are strong enough and gentle enough to hold the rod from the tip, finest tip end to rotate it.